praise God for all that has gone on already today. About three weeks ago, I felt led to bring you a message on spiritual warfare. And then, on Thursday afternoon, I got a little tickle in my throat, ended up with a little laryngitis the next day, went to the doctor, and he said, I know you don't want to hear this, but uh, you need to go get a COVID test. I said, no, I didn't want to hear that. I said, that means I will not be out of church Sunday. He said, that's correct. So I went and had that done. It came back negative. Uh, then last Sunday, Brother Jack was here uh, with the Gideons. So it's today before I can bring the message. Since that time, you know what's happened uh, in Eastern Europe with Russia and all the situations that's going on. So I guess it's best to bring it today rather than three Sundays ago. I listen to a lot of music, uh, probably more than my wife wants me to. <laughs> and I listen to a lot of different places of music. Uh, and I have a lot of songs that touch me. And last Saturday as I was listening to music, I was listening to a song uh, called We're Living in a Broken World. And so I mentioned on Sunday night that I would like for someone to sing it for me. Everybody panics that sing songs. <laughs> I've never heard of it, and I've got to get it ready in a week. But Beth uh, got it for us and uh, did a wonderful job with it. Amen. Amen. It talks about we're living in a broken world. Everything's upside down. Right is wrong, and wrong is right. Amen. That's the way people see it. A broken world won't give you any answers. It'll tell you what you want to hear sometimes, but it really doesn't give you any answers. But that's not for long, because this broken world is cradled by a Savior. Amen? Amen? And nothing here can take him by surprise. Someday, all the hurt will be gone, every tear wiped away. But for now, we're living in a broken world. And if you can't see that, you haven't looked around. So we're going to look at Luke 10, quite a few verses today, uh, and uh, Brother Antoine is going to bring the message tonight because Brother Jake uh, has, is sick, and he asked Brother Antoine to do that. I asked Brother Antoine this morning if it was okay. He said, yes, sir. And I said, you know, I can take care of it if you don't feel like doing it that quick, but he said he would take care of it. I remember one time, a long time ago, uh, uh, an accident had happened on Saturday night, and I was asked in between Sunday school and church to go to Albany, Georgia. And I went to Brother Antoine about 10 minutes before service started and said, Brother Antoine, can you handle the message today? He said, yes, sir. So I guess with 10 minutes notice, he got 24 hours notice this time. He all... He ought to bring a fabulous message, hadn't he? No pressure, brother. So I went off to Albany, and, and Brother Antoine took care of things, and I, I've never forgotten that and never will. So today we're going to look at Luke 10, and we're going to talk about spiritual warfare. We're going to talk about the fact that we're ambassadors for Christ, and we're going to talk about that we should have love for everybody, and we're going to talk about that we're worshipers of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and also, we're going to talk about our eternity. So if you don't want to face eternity things today, you might want to cough a few times and go out, and we'll think you had a little sickness, and not that you don't want to face eternity. Here's the fact. It doesn't matter where we're at. It doesn't matter what we're doing. It doesn't matter if we're at work, at home, at play, at church. It doesn't matter where we're at. Our highest priority and our privilege is to do the will of God. Amen? Amen? And as I tell you many times, to me there's two parts to the will of God. First of all, uh, the Bible says that God would have none to perish but all to come to eternal life. That is the first will of God, that everyone would come to eternal, eternal life. But we're people of choice. Amen? So some will choose eternal life with Him, 
and some will choose eternal life separated from him, which we will talk about in a few moments. But a second part of the will of God is the fact that once you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, your life should be, be being transformed into the image of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So that's the two major parts to the will of God to me. So this morning, I want us to examine some verses, uh, look at our situation today, and um, then talk about eternity. Uh, in Luke 10, 1 through 24, the Bible reads like this. After these things, and remember what had happened prior to this, Jesus had wanted people to go with him, and they said, uh, I will be glad to go with you, but first, but first, I will be glad to go with you, but first. You know, that's not putting Jesus Christ first in our lives. And I imagine, including myself, I know myself, that at times we have not put Jesus first. Amen? After these things, the Lord appointed 70 others also and sent them two by two before his face into every city and, and place where he himself was about to go. He sent them before him, and he was to go after them. Amen? He himself was about to go. Then he said to them, The harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. Still today. Therefore, pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Go your way. Behold, I send you out as lambs among wolves. Still today, hostility towards God's people. And there's a, an urgency to this. Carry neither money bag, knapsack, nor sandals. In other words, travel light and greet no one along the road. They would have elaborate uh, meetings back then. So don't take the time to do all that. Be about my business. But whatever house you enter, first say peace to this house. And if a son of peace is there, your peace will rest on it. If not, it will return to you. And remain in the same house, eating and drinking such things as they give, for the laborer is worthy of his wages. Do not go from house to house. Establish your headquarters there. Whatever city you enter, and they receive you, eat such things that are set before you, and heal the sick there, and say to them, The kingdom of God has come near you. But whatever city you enter, and they do not receive you, go out into the streets and say, The very dust of your city which clings to us, we wipe off against you. Uh, custom of the day, disdain for those ungodly people. Nevertheless, know this, that the kingdom of God has come near you, but I say to you that it will be more tolerable in the day for Sodom than for that city. Uh, more we are offered, the more responsible we are. Amen. Well, to you, Chorazin, well, to you, Bethsaida, for if the mighty works which were done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago sitting in sackcloth and ashes. But it will be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon at the day of judgment than for you and you, Capernaum, who are exalted in heaven, will be brought down to Hades, or place of death. He who hears you hears me. He who rejects you rejects me, and he who rejects me rejects him who sent me. Then the 70 returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons, even the demons are subject to us in your name. And he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. In other words, Jesus said, I saw their commander fall from heaven. So, don't be surprised when his followers fall. Behold, I give you the authority or the power to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the, over all the, power of the enemy, and nothing shall be any, by any means hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. You have an eternity with God. That's what we ought to rejoice about. In that hour, Jesus rejoiced in the Spirit and said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and prudent and revealed them to babes. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in your sight, all the things 
have been delivered to me by my Father, and no one knows who the Son is except the Father, and who the Father is except the Son, and the one whom the Son wills to reveal him. Then he turned to his disciples and said privately, Blessed are the eyes which see the things you see, for I tell you that many prophets and kings have desired to see what you see and have not seen it, and to hear what you hear and have not heard it, the things of Almighty God. Three thoughts this morning about this, and maybe you're saying to yourself, Brother Phil, why do you keep telling us that we could possibly be meeting eternity at any moment? And why do you continue to tell us about the direction we're headed as a country? Well, consider what God's Word says. In Ephesians 6, 12, the Bible says, We do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, spiritual hosts of wickedness. In 2 Corinthians 10, Our weapons are not carnal, but in God. Why? Because strongholds and arguments and every high thing that exalts itself above God. 1 Peter 5, Your adversary, the devil, walks about, like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Amen? John 10, 10, the thief has come to steal, kill, and destroy. Colossians 1 talks about the power of darkness. John 16 says in the world you will have tribulation. Uh, Usually that means persecution of believers. Uh, We are at war. Amen? Amen? Amen. We are in spiritual warfare. The times, it seems, are difficult. It seems that sometimes we feel like everyone is against us. Sometimes it seems like even God is not there for us, but he is. Amen? So the first thing I want us to examine this morning is the task before us. I want us to look at what was going on with them back then, and I want us to look at what's going on with us today. The task before us. Those in our verses were sent with a commission to represent the Lord, as are we. Acts 1.8, Jesus said, When the Holy Spirit has come upon you, you will receive power. Then you are to be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the world. Matthew 28, Jesus said, All authority has given to me, therefore you go and make disciples, baptizing them, teaching all things that I have commanded you. Lo, I am with you. Always, So we have the command from God to do that, and he gives us the power to do it. But the task was difficult. Amen? The harvest is great, but the laborers are few. That means there are many, many people out there around the world that need to hear the good news of Jesus Christ. But there are much too few people that are going to do that. And it also says, we're a sheep among wolves. If you are faithful to God, most likely you will come under some type of persecution. Amen? It may be at work, it may be in your family, it may be with your friends. We are, I think, not to pray for an easier job. Sometimes we do, do we not? I don't think we need to pray for an easier job. We need to pray for more laborers. The laborers were the ones to pray, not the spectators. And the question comes to us, are you a laborer or are you a spectator? It's easy to talk a good game, you know, but it's difficult. You know, it's it's easy to sit and watch a ball game going on, amen, or when it's over with and talk about what should have been done or what needs to be done when we really probably don't have an idea what was going on in the game. It's easy for us to talk about how much we're doing and how little other people are doing when sometimes we need to look in the mirror and see just how much we're doing. That doesn't sit well with most of us, but I believe it's the honest truth. Vance Havner said this, anyone who takes Jesus seriously becomes the target of the devil. Anyone that takes Jesus seriously 
Anyone that's obedient to what the Bible says we ought to be doing becomes the target of the devil. Here's the problem. I'm afraid that many, many people are not dangerous enough to Satan that he even has to worry about us. Amen? Sad sometimes. I've been in that situation myself. There was an urgency to that task. Make one place your headquarters, Jesus said. No extra supplies to burden you down. Trust God to provide. No time for unneeded celebrations. They were his ambassadors, representing him going out into an evil world. Don't we also have the same problem today? Don't we? We have an evil world around us, and we need to be in the midst of it. Luke 10, 2 said, Then he said to them, The harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. Therefore pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into the harvest. We're always looking for laborers. Amen? Amen. I am told from statistics, however much you believe statistics, that 70 to 80 percent of church growth and those that come to church are here because an individual invited them to be here. Amen? Amen. Think about it. If every one of us were to bring one person with us each week, we'd probably have to expand a little more, wouldn't we? Why is that not so? Are there people out there that are looking for hope? Are they? Amen. Are there people out there that feels like life is hopeless? Amen. Are there people out there just waiting for somebody to be a friend to them? Absolutely. Will you be that laborer? The second thing for us to examine today, and this is a serious one, and that is the judgment. The judgment. Jesus said the three ancient cities that had been judged, he talked about them in order to warn the three cities of his day. And what he was saying was this, the more you hear, the more you have, the more responsible you are. Amen? And it makes me think about us. We have Bibles everywhere. Do we not? Many of us have three or four Bibles or five or six Bibles in our homes. People around the world have pages out of Bibles sometimes. It's all they have. And they want more. I have said this, and I believe it, but I urge people not to. If you, if you have in, no intentions whatsoever of following God and doing what he says, it's best that you don't come to church because the more you hear, do you hear me? The more you hear, the more responsible you are. Now, let me say something else on the end of that. If you do come to church and you're not expecting to do anything for God, the Holy Spirit can change you, amen, and then you can do everything you need to do for God. So don't stay away. Come. Come. But understand, the more you hear, the more responsible you are. To hear God's word from anyone or in any manner brings a heavy responsibility to obey. And I think that we could say amen and amen to that. Jesus said, as my Father has sent me, so I send you. If you call yourself a Christian, you are a little Christ, then God has called you to do the things that Jesus Christ did when he was here. And that brings a twofold judgment. You see, when, when we bring a message, when, when I bring a message to you, if you have never trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, it is a message for you to do that, not because I said it, 
but because God commanded it. Amen? And it's also a judgment upon me if I don't go out and tell other people about it. God's word said it's appointed unto mankind once to die and then the judgment. Now we talk about judgment for non-believers, do we not? But judgment is coming for everyone. Do you understand? A judgment day is coming for everyone. And I want us to examine that today two ways. The first is this, the judgment seat of Christ. And you can fill that in in your outline. The judgment seat of Christ. In 1 Corinthians, 12, uh, 1 Corinthians 3, 12 through 15, the Bible talks about there's only one foundation to build upon, and that is Jesus Christ. You can build with gold, silver, precious stones, good things, or you can build with wood, hay, and straw. And when you stand before Jesus at the judgment seat of Christ, your works will be judged as by fire. Fire purifies gold and makes it more pure. It burns up hay and wood and such. Amen? So everyone that's a Christian, won't be any non-Christians at the judgment seat of Christ. Everyone that's a Christian, their work will be judged as by fire. Now the Bible goes on to say, you may not end up with any rewards whatsoever. The things that you did, you might have done selfishly. But if you trusted, genuinely trusted what God has done for you through Jesus Christ, you will be saved. Amen? Do you know without a doubt this day that if you were to die, that you would spend eternity with God and stand before Jesus at the judgment seat of Christ. The next judgment is not so sweet, so sweet to hear, and that's the great white throne judgment. In Revelations 20, 11 through 15, we find these words. Then I saw a great white throne, that's the judgment throne of God, him who sat on it from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. You see, that was a contaminated evil universe, the broken world that we've sung about and talked about today. And there was found no place for them. They might have been trying to hide, but there was no place to hide. And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God, and books, plural, books with an S on it, Books were opened, and another book, singular, was opened, which is the book of life. Those that are, belong to God are in the book of life. And the dead were judged according to their works, what they did when they were here, by the things which were written in the books, plural. The sea gave up the dead who were in it, and death and Hades delivered up the dead who were in them, all the unrighteous dead. And they were judged, each one according to their works, plural, what they did when they were here. Then death and Hades were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death, a spiritual death forever separated from God and anyone not found written in the book of life. The book of life was cast into the lake of fire. That is the final hell, the final destination of those that, re that rejected what God offered for them and a separation eternally from a holy God. Do you today know for sure if you've died that you would spend eternity with God and be before Jesus at the judgment seat of Christ? Or do you feel like you would be at the great white throne judgment to be judged not whether you get, went to heaven or not, but how, according to this, there's degrees of hell. Amen? 
degrees of punishment according to what you did in life. And I've told you before, you know, I can, somebody can see me doing a, a kind deed for someone, okay? And they can say, Brother Phil's doing a good thing. But I could be doing it thinking what I was going to get from doing that deed. And when I stand before Jesus, he's going to wipe that reward away because I was doing it for a selfish reason, not because of the goodness of my heart. And I won't get a reward for that. I'm still going to be in the eternity with God, but I will not get a reward for that. That brings us to our final thought, and that is the joy. Can't we all understand the joy that the 70 felt? Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. Wouldn't that be something? Just go out and understand that what happened was because of Almighty God, and we spoke it, and it happened. But Jesus cautioned them because they were and we are still in spiritual warfare, living in a broken world. The Bible says as believers we are weak in ourselves but strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Always remember, Satan will never give up until he and all his cronies are put into their final resting place. They will be finally defeated and will have no more influence on any of us so jesus cautioned them don't just rejoice that they flee because of my name rejoice that you have an eternity set in heaven our verses said your names are written in heaven that's a construction that I've told you about many times that means your names are written there and they stand written and it's not going to become unwritten or blotted out or gone away. Amen? Amen? The greatest miracle is salvation. I hope and pray that you have it. Three quick things about our joy. We, we have service to the Lord. We're co-laborers with Christ. Amen? We have salvation, which is the greatest thing anyone could ever have, and the sovereignty of God. He knows all things. This evil world, this broken world is cradled by a Savior. Amen? And one day, one day, judgment will come. Paul states in Romans 8, Romans 8, that nothing can separate us from the love of God. 1 John 5, 12 said, Those who have the Son of God have life. 1 John 5, 13 said, These things are written that you may know without any shadow of a doubt that you have eternal life. John 5, 24 says, He who hears my word and believes has eternal life. 1 Peter 1, 5, We are kept not by our good works, but by the power of God. Amen? Romans 8, 16 says, The Spirit himself testifies that we are children of God. Hebrews 7, 25 says, He is able to save forever. John 10, 28 says, No one is able to snatch us from his hand. Ephesians 4, 30, The Holy Spirit seals us, holds us tight until that day of salvation. He who is in us is greater than he who is in the world. Amen? He who believes has eternal life. And when you're thinking about end times and the tribulation, I always point people to Revelation 11, 15. Before that comes the seven seals, amen, and the seven trumpets. And the seventh trumpet is like this in Revelation eleven fifteen. Then the seventh angel sounded. And there were loud voices in heaven saying, The kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever. Amen? And then comes the seven bowls of wrath, the great tribulation. We're living in a broken world. Everything's upside down. Wrong is right, right is wrong. In a broken world, 
cannot give you the answers that you need. But this broken world is cradled by a Savior. And one day, every tear will be wiped away from those that belong to him. You know, I hear people say sometimes at a cemetery, he's in a much better place. And I think to myself, if he belonged to God, he's in a much better place. If he didn't trust God, he's in a worse place in a broken world. Amen? I hope and pray today that you could say, without a doubt, that you belong to God, and that if you were to die today, the Bible says to be absent from this body is to be present with the Lord. Amen? Amen. I hope and pray that you could say that, whether you're here, whether you're out there. If you're out there and you've never made that decision, you all you have to do is understand all have sinned, all fall short of the glory of God. The wages, the payment, the result of that sin is an a spiritual separation from a holy God. But the Bible says, if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth what God has done through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, you will be saved. Amen? Amen. We will have a time of invitation in just a moment. If you have never made that decision, I would love to talk to you about it. But I really don't even have to talk to you about it. You can go straight to God. Amen? You can ask God to forgive you of your sin and that you're trusting what he's done for you through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And the Bible says you will be saved if you're genuine. Father, we love you and we thank you so much for loving us. We thank you for all the many, many blessings that you give us. Father, we know that there are many. We come to you today, Father, realizing that we're all sinners. We're either sinners saved by your amazing grace or we're still sinners lost in our sin, separated from God, separated from you because of our sin. We know that you're a holy God. We know that the Angels and others cry out, holy, holy, holy. We sing songs of praise that you're holy. And we know because of that, we can't come into your presence with sin in our lives. Father, I pray today, I beg today, that your Holy Spirit would fall down upon each individual that's here. And Lord, that a recommitment for those that have trusted Jesus as Lord and Savior would come about. And Father, if there's one here that's not sure where they would spend eternity, I pray, Father, this would be the day. This would be the day. Father, touch us, lead us, guide us, and protect us in every way. And we thank you, Father, for the many verses that we were able to look at today that point us to a decision. Lord, touch each heart now and cause us to be able to move and not be ashamed of you because your word says, Jesus said, if we are ashamed of him in this life, he will be ashamed of us and not confess us to you. So, Father, cause us to confess and profess Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior this day. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen and amen. If you would, if you please stand.